dust settles whenever that may be, two weeks, a month from now, 60 days from now, hopefully sooner rather than later, what does the real estate market look like then? Let me tell you, lucky for us, we live in South Florida. That's right. And, and you know what? There's always a, a huge demand for South Florida, and this is only causing up a pent-up demand. You know, I, I think once we're able to go back in the streets, you know, we're walking into an environment that's fueled with low interest rates, with high attention, and uh, get ready, because I think whatever we missed out on, we're going to get back, and we're going to get back fast. That's right. So, get ready means Ooh. get ready now so you can pound those phones, because, well, you know, the work you do now doesn't come out for the next three months, six months as that's well. Right. So, no doubt start laying foundation. This is the time to not only sharpen your tools, but reach out to the people that you need to talk to. That's right. And what's crazy. All right, we're live, buddy. Super Here we are. We're going to give a fist bump, elbow. Let's do it. Let me see if I can squeeze in here. There you go. All right, buddy. Nothing stops the closer club. Nothing. I love it. Uh, episode 97, baby. Honored to be here. All right, here we go. Uh, honored to have you on, buddy. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alex Vidal. I am president of Related ISG International Realty and host of the show you're watching. Episode 97, 97 weeks in a row, we don't stop. And today, we are sitting with not only somebody who is a true professional in our business, like one of the top experts in our field, no doubt. He happens to be a really great friend of mine, George Guerra. George, you ready? No more handshakes for the time being. George and I actually go back 22 years for to sure. uh, before my 22-year-old son was born. So actually probably 23 years. I used to have jet black hair and he used to have long, slick black hair. I did have long hair past my shoulders. That's actually a very true story. And his hair was darker back then. Uh, but George and I have known each other 22 years. He is not only the broker of a real, really good, strong brokerage in South Florida called Real Estate Salesforce. If you don't work for Related ISG, you should be working for this guy because they are phenomenal. Uh, but he's also chairman of the Miami Association of Realtors, which, if correct me if I'm wrong, is the largest association in the yeah. entire country. Now, we're going to talk about the elephant in the world right now, which is coronavirus. But before we do, why don't you share with them in a couple minutes your backstory about how you got to where you are? Great. First of all, Alex, I want to thank you for the awesome job you're doing for our industry. Um, it's very rare that you find a broker that's able to give back not only to his brokerage, but to his community uh, or to his company in the way that you do it and what you're doing rocks. You know, I, I love to watch the show. The lessons that, that, that I've learned, you know, I teach them in my own office. So keep on doing what you're doing. And again, you know, from, from a, a realtor, from a broker to a broker, what you're doing is on point. Thank you. So with that being said, we go live. There's no second cut. Sorry, that's my son at home school. Um, to make a long story short, I started in the industry when I was 19 years old. And uh, I, I practiced during the boom. I, 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 I crashed during, during the boom. And uh, when, when the market came back, um, you know, I, I did what I needed to do to figure out what was working. And slowly but surely, I built up a company. And, uh, you know, it wasn't hard. As you know, building up a company takes a lot of time. You know, I want to say my secret was consistency, persistency, and really never giving up. Um, you know, working, having a brokerage in South Florida, as you know, is one of the most competitive environments in the, whole, right. the whole entire world. Um, and uh, you, you know what? I, um, luckily for me, it was the right time, the right place, the right message. And, uh, you know, I want to say the main reason why I'm here is because I have a good temperature on what's going on. But more importantly, like you, I love to get involved and I love to get back. But, you know, it's an important thing. You said right time, right place, right everything. The reality is, I think when you're consistent and persistent, you always find the time. It always becomes the right time. All right. Let's get into and I do want to talk about the association a little bit later. Um, but let's talk about coronavirus. I think one of the main benefits of today's episode is really what is it about? How does it affect our industry? What can we be doing as realtors? And I know you and I are going to have a great conversation about this. So let's start off right off the bat. For the realtors that are watching that are going to be most of the viewers, what are the opportunities right now that are being presented to us that we can seize the moment on? So, so you know what? From, there's so many opportunities, but I think the most important opportunity is first and foremost to realize that us realtors, we are people of the community. So right now, there's an opportunity to let our community know that we're here, we're here to help in whichever safe way we can. And I love to see realtors not only you know in, in Miami, but throughout the nation give, give, giving back, 
reaching out to people saying, hey, if your kid doesn't have any food or if you're having some hard times, we're here for you. And, and I, I know it's a risky play, but th there's an opportunity to give back and be part of the community. And I think it's a great opportunity for us Realtors to remind people how relevant we are and what an impact we make sure. in our community. You know, and one thing I love about that, which this, I just thought of this right now, there's been it, nothing I thought of, it. I didn't recreate this, but it's out there on social media of people getting together collectively and going over the and going to the elderly population and helping them out as realtors. We could extend an invite to our elderly clients and offer assistance to go to the grocery I, shopping. Area. Listen, I, I think we, we owe it to our community to let them know that we're here and uh, that, that we're here to help out. And, and again, that's how we start relationships. You know, I, I think you, you grew a company under this premise. That's right. You know, it's all about relationships. And, and you know what? I think when you're able to help your neighbor, whenever when you're able to go back into your farm area and say, I'm not here for the commission, I'm here to make sure that we're all okay. I think it, it creates a phenomenal foundation for a relationship. That's right, absolutely. Power of relationships. You know it. All right, so here we are. We've helped the community, but we're gonna find ourselves potentially under lockdown soon who knows or closing restaurants all that good stuff what are some other things and activities that us as realtors should be focusing on during this time outside of helping helping those around so, so great question and, and you know what one, one of my favorite things to tell agents is that every once in a while you have to go back into the shed and sharpen your tools yeah and and, and you know what right now you know the Miami Association of Realtors is taking precautionary measures and they're closing down their training facilities but it has forced them to go live. And if you go to www.miamirealtorslive.com, you'll be able to see a lot of the trainings that you would have to see in person, actually in video. Wow. So, so, so you, you know what? What a great opportunity to refresh yourself on Matrix, to check out the latest features on RPR, to see what's going on in Remind. Again, this is a time that we're, we're locked up for a little while. Let's go back and let's sharpen our tools. Let's make sure that in the next two to three weeks when we go out there, you know, we're firing on all cylinders, making sure that we're giving our clients the very best of us. You know, it's important though, This and I love that. In order to fire on all cylinders, you need to know who the hell you're calling to begin with, right? So I think sharpening your, TED could also, your, your, shed, sharpening your tools in the shed could also do with your database. Get your database ready. Mike Ferry has a great way of dedicating or determining who's in your sphere of influence. If they know you on a first name basis. Love that. Right? They know you on a first name basis. First name, last name, address, city, state, zip, birthday, email address, social media handle. Follow these people, call them, get the information. What I love about sellers too is right now, sellers are home. Everybody's home. And, and everybody's home, right? So my sales manager, Carolina Gertz and Aventura, we were talking about this off camera. I had a great piece of advice. She goes, everybody's home right now. They're answering the phone. Genius. And, they're, and they're, they, they're lonely. They want to talk to people. But if you have a seller who's potentially ready to sell their home, now's a great time to be cleaning it out. Um, if you have a buyer that's looking, now's a great time to get all those documents together to provide to, uh, for the mortgage broker, no having to do it later when they go back to work. Um, well, well, listen, now's the time that you should definitely be reaching out. And, and no doubt the first um, opportunity of reaching out should be to see what they need and at the same time to, to, to give a real estate ear to make sure that you know, whatever they need that you're, you're there for. So no doubt, get on the phones. It's the best to offer. That's right. Now, they should get on their phones for a reason. Let's talk about this. And we talked about this a little bit off camera too. Dust settles, whenever that may be, two weeks, a month from now, 60 days from now, hopefully sooner rather than later. What does the real estate market look like then? Let me tell you, lucky for us, we live in South Florida. That's right. And, and you know what? There's always a, a huge demand for South Florida, and this is only causing up a pent up demand. You know, I, I think once we're able to go back in the streets, you know, we're walking into an environment that's fueled with low interest rates, with high attention, and uh, get ready, because I think whatever we missed out on, we're going to get back, and we're going to get back fast. That's right. So, get ready means Ooh. get ready now so you can pound those phones, because, well, you know, the work you do now doesn't come out for the next three months six months as That's well. Right. So no doubt, start laying foundation. This is the time to not only sharpen your tools, but reach out to the people that you need to talk to. That's right. And what's crazy about it, with interest rates so low and the Fed pumping so much money into, the banks have to get rid of this money, you know? And, and, and the refis are, are crazy right now. Okay, now you and I, we both run substantial, substantially large real estate companies. I think at least we're both in the 450 range. Let's get technical. What kind of impact is coronavirus having on pending deals? Because I'm sure you're getting the phone calls I'm getting. And how should our realtors address coronavirus in their contracts going forward, whether they're making offers or getting offers on their properties? So let's talk about current deals right now. So, so you, you know what? I, I think we're just starting to see some of the effects, not, not very much. You know, I would tell you that in our deal pool, you know, less than 1% are having issues with that. And, and those that are having issues are, are those that... Uh, 
mismanage their funds and had it in the stock market when they should have been deposit yeah. ready. Um, some of the lower end hospitality, rental clients, yeah. and travel industry um, are, are having second thoughts and are having um, some issues coming up with you know the right funds to, to, to actually move in. So we're seeing those on those spectrums. And right people now. looking for excuses to get out of contracts. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. How about how about prepping for the for the future? What what should we be? So doing? so, so you, you know what you know we're all familiar familiar in our, in our contracts with force majeure, act of God, and uh, no doubt I feel like it falls under that criteria. But I'm not an attorney, so I'm, I really no one to give an opinion. So so I, I think we're seeing you know a, a bunch of clauses about the coronavirus. If somebody gets infected, if there's quarantine measures put in place, and uh, I think moving forward, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have something in writing. You know. Uh, talking about what would happen under those cases. I, I think it'd be smart for both buyers and sellers yeah. to, to, to have one. I've seen an addendum, agents posting addendums floating around. To me, it seems very general. Um, it, it, it addresses some things, but there's some very broad terms, like if the government shut down, well, what technically considers a shutdown? What shutdown of what, et cetera? Um, so, so is the association going to be putting anything out or have you heard of anything like that? So you, you know what? The association has its ear on, on what's going on and, and keep in mind that their main focus is really the membership. You know, they're, they're interested in their staff, in the members, making sure that they're getting the right education, that we're watching whatever le legislation is going on, that whatever online training for both new and experienced agents is out there. Um, I'm not sure their main eye is on, on a contract and what's on the contract. No. You know, I, I think they have, they have a much bigger role, but I think it's, it's us brokers' job and our in-house attorneys or the attorneys that we hire, or maybe even Florida realtors to give us some great directions on what would be the proper writing. Now, I, I, I would be conscious of anything that I see online. Whatever you see, make sure you do it <laughs> with your broker and, and or your attorney before you get it signed. You mean it's not true? When it comes well, to you, again, just make sure you run into the proper channels. We're not attorneys. Let's get an okay. Maybe we can call Margie. Else. Margie's been on the show. Maybe yeah, we'll call Margie listen, Grant she, when, she, when we're done. She'd be an expert. All right. So let's switch gears a little bit because one question I've asked a lot of real estate players uh, on the show have been prior to this ever even happening was what kind of impact will tech have on our business? And what does our industry look like in five or 10 years? I'm gonna add an asterisk to that. Because of the timing of this interview, that question, the asterisk would not be there. But being that we're, the timing it is, the asterisk is, I'm gonna add this to this question is, did your opinion change as a result of coronavirus? So um, I, I think that in five to 10 years, we won't even remember the, the coronavirus. Yeah. You know, I think it'll be just a small blimp in our radar. Um, if, if we do a good job the next 14, 15 days. Um, when it comes to tech in the next 10 to 15 years, I really don't have a crystal ball. If I did have a crystal ball, I would imagine that we would have the tools to make a client feel like they're in the property without leaving their house. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I think that experience would have to be curated by, by a professional realtor. Um, what, I, what I do know is this, is that I've been in the business 22 years. When I first got into the industry, there was no internet. You had to come into my office to find the house that you were looking for. The Bresser's book, you had the blue book, you, you the know, Bresser's book. You know book. what, 10 years later, the internet boomed. And I, I, I remember Vidal, that people in my industry were having a heart attack. Oh my God, the internet's gonna change the game. We're gonna lose our industry forever. Fast forward 2019, I think we had a 96% realtor use, highest of all time ever. Wow. So, so I think I, I think that uh, you know we, we, we're always scared of tech, we can never predict it. But if there's one thing that I've noticed the doll is that the human element is always involved regardless on how tech evolves. That's right. And uh, understand this, that how often we buy, you know, is, is every 10 years. Think that, you know, we get married every 10 years, we graduate every 10 years. It's not something that happens common. And every time I look back 10 years, my techniques, my problems, my situations have changed. And every single time it requires a professional. When you look at um, how different properties are. Every property has a different story, has different values that computers or algorithms can't, Correct. can't you know, come up with. When you look at the value, you know, this is someone's most expensive asset. You don't want to press a button and, and get it. You, know, you can't return it. This is something that, that you need some real consultation, you know, some real con convincing. Um, you know this and I know this. All the things that can go wrong in a deal, right. you're going to want to talk to somebody who's resourceful, someone who's able to make it happen. And again, I haven't seen any tech or computer. Now, now that, that, <laughs> there that, may that, be a doll. No, that, 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 that can make it happen. Now, in, in my, my 10, 20 years, 
you know, I, I have found some tech that is game changing, you know, that has really revolutionized the industry. And uh, my favorite, and I, and I think you love this, you know, it, my favorite tech to use is dot loop or form simplicity. Sure. With a listing agreement or an as is contract. Right. I think there's no more effective tool, you know, to make money than utilizing th th those two. Especially in our market where we deal a lot with international buyers. For sure. T 22 years ago, I used to get a contract that would take me eight hours to get it back. Today in 37 minutes, I get it. To me, that's a wow technology. Absolutely. Okay. I think um, the internet was a wow technology to allow consumers to search on their own. I think, you know, from the convenience of their home, I think it's a game changer. Um, we've seen video marketing. We've seen how important that has been today from, from an industry perspective. I think the consumer today, you know, wants to sit back and I think they want to feel like they're walking their home from their iPhone, their iPad, or their their their, their computer. When, when I look at tech evolution, I think those have been the biggest game-changing sure. techs. And I think as real estate practitioners, those are the ones that we need to focus on. Those are the ones that we need to sharpen our tools. But again, I think I think the biggest tech there is the one that doesn't exist. It's it's the relationship. It's how can I build that relationship? Face to face, nose to belly nose. to belly, nose to nose, elbow to elbow. And <laughs> for now, and, 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 and Vidal, there's no tech that'll ever replace. I, I, I think the I, complexity, the deal will always be there. And in ten years, the variables will change, requiring an expert as well. Oh, and you said ninety six percent of real estate transactions involve the realtor, and it went up. Uh, it went, that, ten years ago, we thought the sky was falling. The internet has changed the game. Right. Who needs a buyer's agent? Fast forward today you know we're, we're an integral part of the transaction all right so let's yeah. jump to the next question on tech because you this is the one i think you and i are going to have a lot of fun with you have a great quote and it's a question slash quote how am i slaying i buyer i work break that down for me so so you know what the, the i buyer is is a solution for a seller to have a simple transaction okay that's their goal yep. they want a seller say here <laughs> get it the issue is that that simple transaction comes at a heavy cost you know, when you run the numbers, you see it's terrible. Well, listen, I think the reason why you hire a realtor is really because the amount of money he's going to put back into your pocket. That's right. So, so the I buyer doesn't really threaten me. I think the consumer is very savvy. They do their research. They go online more than ever. I think that the I buyers like tech. It's a little bit of a big hype. You know, um, the way that I slay the I buyer is really simple. Is I work. You know, how do I work? I make sure that I know the tools that are available to me when it comes to search. I'm top of my game when it comes to matrix. When it comes to value, I know the tools that are out there that help me generate value and I'm able to explain it to my clients. When it comes to forms, that I know how to write the right forms, protect my client, and uh, you know, really look after their interests. Um, and by the way, iBuyer has been around forever. You look at the, you know, we buy ugly homes billboards. Listen, they, they, it's the for, same thing for just sure. in the computer. I, I think from a marketing perspective, I gotta be visible in front of my audience. I need to be consistent with my marketing and let people know that I'm a real estate professional and that I'm good at what I do. Um, I also think from, from a value perspective, Vidal, I need to call people and let them know that I'm here, let them know the services that I can provide and see how I can help them. If I don't give that, Face to face. If I don't let people know that I'm in the business, if I don't sharpen my tools and keep them top of mind, a computer is going to beat me. You see why I like this? Guy Listen, so much? A, a computer is going to beat me. But if I do all those things, a computer is no match. I don't fear the eye buyer because I work, right. and, and and I preach that to my agents, and I know you do too. Absolutely. And uh, I have a whole video on it. Actually, that, that the eye buyer doesn't scare me. Not, Br ninety. Bring it on. Ninety. Per go on to my YouTube. Ninety percent. Bring it on. Forty percent. Eye buyer. That's right. Oh, it's. I'll spare you the video. 90% plus 40% equals opportunity on my YouTube yeah. channel. Check it out. By the way, talking about opportunities, get in front of people. We're quarantined right now. Let's, let's assume we get quarantined in the next few days. If you do a quick little test, look at your social media. Look at your posts that you've been posting or in your story. Everything for me, at least for the most part, has doubled in viewship, right? So right now, people are at home on Facebook, on Instagram. They're scrolling through. If there's ever a time to get into social in a big way right now. Not just with real, real estate, but, but with everything. Last question I wrap up every interview with. Book, podcast, or TED Talk recommendation for the audience. So, so you know what? I'm going to throw you a curve and I'm going to give you a Netflix or, or a documentary. There you go. Awesome. All right. So um, due to the semi-lockdown, um, I'm going to encourage you guys to go to Netflix and watch two movies. Number one, The Minimalist. Okay. And number two, Tidy Up. Okay, these are, these are both movies on <coughs> Need Less 
and we need to get rid of a bunch of junk, we're stuck at home. Let's empty out those drawers, let's clean up our house, let's make sure that we clean out all the garbage, let's have a garage sale, put some money that we might have missed out back in our pockets. Oh, you like that. You like that, but you, you know what? Nothing better than starting two, three weeks from now with a clean house, everything the way it's supposed to be, and being able to attack the market. So, so, so Realtors, help your, customer, help your customer do the garage sale. And, and, and you, you know what, at the same time, for sanity, to find an activity to do at the house. You know, even, you know, going back to one of the earlier questions, what can I be doing? Call your friends and tell them, hey, if you got nothing to do, I got a recommendation for you. But give them something to do. Be involved. Be relevant. The dog, I want to thank you Dude, for inviting me. Taking was, the time to come over here and give some value to your people. That was awesome. All right, I'm going to go around and turn off the camera. Any parting words for the audience before we go, George? Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed to The Closers Club, make sure you ring the bell. There you go.